Hi, I'm Shibi Yuto, and you're listening to Clamp Talk. Hello, everyone. So this is Clamp Talk number two. Yay! <laughs> I'm very happy to be doing this second episode. Um, I have a I had a very nice feedback from you guys. Thank you, everyone, for listening and for sending your thoughts and opinion on the first one. Um, this for this one, I I think the audio will be better. I promise not to puff on the microphone that much. I'm I'm doing a little trick here to prevent that from happening. Um, so thanks for listening. Um, this will be our our um, regular um, audio encounter, or you can call call it like that. Um, and to begin, I would just like to to clarify uh, that this is not a podcast. I I learned the difference between podcast and cloudcast. So this is a cloudcast because you're listening to it on the cloud, which means that you didn't have to download the file to listen to this uh, cloudcast you are listening on the um, on streaming so so it's called cloudcast but anyway you can call it as you want i, I really don't care uh, so this is a uh, um, the clam talk let's call it the clam talk because clam talk is clam talk it's just like mokona mokona is mokona so that's what it is um I would also like to, um, since uh, I've decided to do this um, regularly, I must say that, well, I'm not sure if everyone knows that, but I'm from Brazil, so English is not my, my primary language. Uh, I've learned English in the, during the course of my life, and I'm still learning, so I just want to apologize in advance if I make any mistakes here that that may uh, offend you since you if you know the language if you are familiar if you um, especially if you study the language and if you live in a country that speaks English I'm very very sorry if I make some mistake here I just decided to do this in English in order to reach a bigger number of people so apologize in advance for that I'm still learning. I'm I'm not a professional English speaker. I just want to have fun, and I really love the language. So um, here I am doing my best. Okay, thanks. I would like to start with um, a topic suggested by a fellow Brazilian clan fan called. Guilherme Dias. Uh, in fact, I, I realized that we live in the same city. That's a freaking coincidence. But anyway, <laughs> um, he asked me about the early days of Clump, basically. He says, um, I'm quoting him, him right now. How did Clump start? I know they were a big group of friends and they ended up being just the current four and all. But how did they start working? Which were the dojishins they made? I have some pics of their old works, and I don't know anything about them. I have no idea about the inception, the characters and all. What was Shoten? I've seen pics of Ashura, Yasha, Seichiro, Subaru, etc. And I don't know what kind of role they have in this story. So there you go. Um, basically, it's about the early days of Clump. Hmm, I really like this topic. It's very challenging because it's extremely difficult to find information about Clump early days. And um, I picked this up because I think it, it could be helpful for the fans listening to this to, to learn what I know about it. And uh, maybe we can share some information. Um, for me, it's also very difficult to talk about this. So... I will make an overview of what I know. I might forget some details or I might be slightly mistaken, but everything I'm, I, I will talk here um, 
has sources. So I'm not saying that because I I made it up. So I basically it's information that I was able to gather from the all these years of of being a clamp fan. So um, let's start in the very very early days of clamp. Um, we know that Satsuki, Nikoi, and Mokona, the three of them, they were from Kyoto, and they were high school, they were friends since they, they, they were very little. Um, they went to school together, basically, so they were like friends since a very long time. Okawa, on the other hand, she was not friends with them. She, she, she's from Osaka, as you may know, and, you know, Osaka, Kyoto, they are from the same uh, area, but they are different cities, so they didn't know each other when they were kids. Uh, all of them, they had one thing in common. They loved doing manga. So, um, in Japan, it's very, very common that uh, uh, people that want to be uh, manga cast, they want to be, they want to draw manga, they start making doujinshi. And for those who don't know, Doujinshi is like a it's self-published magazine, you can call it like that, or uh, any sort of uh, work. So, by by common ways, you usually when you uh, when you publish something, you need to publish through a publisher. But it's not easy to get a contract. It's not easy to be signed to a, a big publisher. So, when you are inspired inspiring artists you start um, making your own publications and uh, printing your own uh, magazines and, and works and then you sell them for uh, for some price or whatever and uh, you, you usually do that in conventions I think you people who if you've been to uh, any anime or manga convention you would see people selling them fanzines and and uh, their original publications so that's uh, that's what it is that's what doujinshi is it's when you um, publish something by yourself so you, you put your own money into it and uh, and you print everything yourself maybe not at your home but you um, what I mean is you um, sponsor it with your own money and and everything it's from your own pocket so that's what doujinshi is all about and usually in japan you start doing doujinshi about other famous works so um like um a parody of some famous work or even not a parody but uh, some alternative story anyway it's like fanfics it's like a uh, fan arts it's it's the same basically you 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 pay uh, a tribute to to some work that you like but you do you do your you do it your own way with your own story with your own drawing style and sometimes you can throw even some original characters uh that yourself created and that's how Clem started the girls, they all like manga, and they all used to be part of doujinshi groups. So, um, Okawa, she came from a doujinshi group that's called Ushiro Yubisasa Regumi. I'm not sure if I said that right, but it's Ushiro Yubisasa Regumi. And I don't know what it means, but that's, that's, uh, that's the name of the group that she was from. That group was made of Okawa and Tamayo Akiyama. Tamayo Akiyama was also a former Clamp member. She used to be with Clamp in the early days, but then she left, and she now has a solo career uh, as a mangaka. She's not very active these days, but um, she's too she's she's a mangaka still. Um, Okawa and Tamayo they were childhood friends. They were they were friends since they were they went to school together in Osaka, so that's how they knew each other. Um, the other three, Mokona, Satsuki, and Nekoi, they came from a group called Z Project. Z Project was made of those three ladies and one more, so it was four total, a uh, total of four members. I cannot read the name of the other one, it's all in kanjis and uh, 
my Japanese knowledge, it's not enough to read it, but、um, there were four members. So,、uh, these groups, they used to go to Comicat. Comicat is a very, very popular、uh, convention in Japan of anime and, and, and manga, and there's a lot of people selling their original publications there. So,、uh, they used to go to that event, and I think that's how they came to know each other. I'm not really sure, but because it's not very clear, or they either that or they,、um, I, I know for sure that they knew each other from, through a mutual friend. So, between those groups, there were um, um, some people that knew all the groups, and they, that's how Clamp all came about. So, Those girls the, from these two groups, and then the other groups, there were more groups, not just these two. They all came together,、uh, they all liked manga and doing、uh, fanzines and doujinshi. So they, they started to, to make, make a group of, of their own. And that's how Clamp started.、Uh, the first doujinshi is dated from 1987. From July 19, 1987. So we know this is the first original publication under the name of Clamp. So even though Clamp is,、uh, has 20 years of、uh, professional activity, they have in fact、um, more than、uh, 26 years now of being together and stuff. So, the, the, the very first doujinshis, they were all、uh, based on some famous work. Like, they used to do doujinshi for Sanseya, they used to do it for、um, Shurato, and many other popular、uh, mangas and animation from that time. On 1988, they released the, their first original doujinshi. So, what is that, an original doujinshi?、Um, It's when you publish something that it's not about any other work. It's something that you created yourself. Your own characters, your own story, everything by yourself. So that's an original, original doujinshi is all about. That first doujinshi is called Rigo Veda Disco Version. And as you can see it from the title, it's about Rigo Veda, which would later be the first professional work of Clamp.、Um, After that, they released some more doujinshis about other works, other famous works, and also some original doujinshis,、uh, which is the Shoten, Shoten series.、Uh, so that's what Shoten is all about.、Uh, they released a total of six volumes of the Shoten, which、uh, is、uh, made of original works of Clamp. Maybe there were some also some、um, like doujinshis from some other famous works. I'm not sure. I don't have all six shotens, but、um, it's essentially an original publication and original stories.、Um, in shoten, we see many, many、um, characters that would later appear in some, in some other clamp works. Like, we see the Rigo Veda characters, we see、um, the Tokyo Babylon characters,、um, Clamp Gakuen Tanteidan, the, the,、um, the Imonoyama family. So, we see those characters、um, first being introduced in those doujinshis. So, that shows that those characters were already very familiar for Clamp back then. And by the way, I just want to make a,、um, a very interesting point here. The doujinshis made by Clem, they were very, very, very professional looking. I had a chance of seeing a few of them, and they were like just so well done. The paper quality, the covers, the material they used for doing the, the book, it's all very top quality.、Um, Material, especially for Shoten, even though there were six volumes, the six volumes are all very different from each other. So it's the same、um, um, series, you, you can say it's, it's, it's all Shoten, but they all differ from each other very distinctively. They use different cover,、uh, different paper sizes, and、um, they put some goodies sometimes, 
and、uh, like postcards and well, you name it. It's very professional. So they released a total of twenty-two doujinshis. Some of them were released after they were、uh, prof- they, they became professional mangakas. I counted seven, so I think seven doujinshis were released after they、uh, debuted with、uh, Rigu Veda. So they used to sell those、um, doujinshis in Comiket and some other conventions, and it says that they were very popular. Especially the first original one, the Rigu Veda disco version, it was very popular. And then I believe that Rigu Veda's publisher、um, approached Clamp and asked them to write a one shot for one of the the magazines. And that's how the first chapter of Rigu Veda was published in South Magazine. And、uh, at first, Rigu Veda was un- was not supposed to be. Uh, a series. It was just a, a one shot. Of course, they had intentions for it to be a series, but they were only starting, so they didn't know if the the manga would be well accepted by the readers. So it turns out that the chapter was very well received by the readers, and、uh, the publisher asked for Clem to draw some more and see how it goes. So Clem did that. They drew some more chapters for Rigu Veda, but by then they also did not know that the series would be ten volumes long, that it would run for five or six years. They did not know that, so they kept drawing,、uh, even though they were hoping that it would become serious. They they didn't know for sure because it all depended how well received it was for the readers of the magazine. And then、uh, at one point, I think from chapter on. Onwards,、uh, Rigoveda moved to uh, um, Wings magazine, and it stayed there until the、um, until it was、uh, concluded. So yeah, I think I believe that by halfway through the story, they knew that it would be、um, a regular series, and that they would have like、uh, room to draw. As many volumes as they wanted, but in the beginning it was not like that. So, as they were drawing the Guveda, they did not did not stop drawing、um, doujinshis. They only stopped drawing doujinshis in 1991. That's when the last doujinshin came out, and then they only did、um, professional manga.、Uh, it's worth mentioning that when the Guveda started. There were seven clamp members, so the 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 four of them that we know, and three others, but then、uh, eventually, the the three others left, and only the four that we know remained. So that's a very very quick look of how they started. Of course, there are many many more details, but、uh, I have a very limited time here to to say. Uh, maybe it would be very nice if we had like some sort of official biography by Clamp members themselves, so that we know all the details that we don't know. So there you go, Guilherme. I hope that you're happy, and I hope it helped you somehow. Okay, moving on.、Um, I have some other suggestion here from. Also, a Brazilian fellow called Eric Garnick from Facebook. He says, "Can you name your top three clamp mangas, considering just the art style and putting aside the story? In which art style it's your least favorite?" That's very interesting, very, very, very. Because、um, he asked me to not to disregard the story completely and just think about the art style. Well. It's very easy. At the top of my head, I can think of X as first, then Clover, and then、hmm, the third one.、Uh, maybe not as easy as I thought. I would probably say I want to say Goho Drug, but I'm I'm very scared to do that. I really like the art of Goho Drug, and I don't mean drag and drop. I mean Goho Drug. The first three volumes, I really like it. But、um, well, 
okay, so I, I will say Ligo Veda because it's 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 so pretty and and so detailed. I go for details when I think about art, and the more complex it seems, um, more attracted I feel to it. So yes, X Clover and and Ligo Veda, and it's very funny because these are my some of my very favorite clamp works. Well, X and Clover definitely, and and uh, I love the story as well. So it's a coincidence that I like both art and story for these two works. But um, I chose Rigo Veda because, like I said, because it's more, it's very complex and very uh, detailed. Especially if you if you get very late volumes, the the first ones, the the early volumes, uh, you know, it's clamped the early days of clamp, so they are still learning a lot, so it's not that good. But uh, the 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 last volume, especially, it's it's so pretty. This other one, and which art style is your least favorite? <sighs> I guess. You'd have to be drag and drop, but we already talked about that on the previous episode. I don't want to sound redundant, but I can't think of anything else. The art of um, drag and drop really bothers me, and I think it's my least favorite. Yeah, and I really like the story, so there you go. I, I like the story, and I don't like the art. So, yeah. It's very bad when you don't like the art. Because uh, for me, if the story is bad, at least you can appreciate the art and, you know, who cares about the story? <laughs> I'm joking. Oh, I forgot about Gate 7. Hmm. Maybe Gate 7 instead of Rigo Veda. Yeah, I, I've, I really like Gate 7's art. I think I will make that change because um, Rigo Veda is pretty and all, but... It's not very consistent because the f the first ones are 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 very um, um, amateurish and I mean for clamp, of course I wouldn't be able to draw that, but but Gate Seven is more um, constant. The art at least seems very uh, constant throughout the the first four volumes. So I would say Gate Seven in the third. Okay, so let's talk about some clamp news. Um, this month, actually no, last month, <laughs> the end of August, uh, clamp's official website was finally relaunched. I was very looking forward to the um, the reopening, and uh, I was a bit disappointed, but I was more happy that it's back than anything else. When I look at the website, it looks very simple. We just have some four or five sections, and that's it. Um, the the work section it's called books in the new site. It's very limited. It just shows the the main works of Clamp. It doesn't mention the collaborations or doesn't have the covers for all volumes and release dates for all the volumes, which I think it's very important. And it doesn't have that. Um, it doesn't mention a lot of, of collaborations and some other uh, the art books or CDs and DVDs, nothing like that. Just the, just the mangas and the, the covers of the first volumes of each series. I like the blog section, of course, because um, I was missing that channel where uh, Clamp can write more than a uh, tweet. Like they've been tweeting a lot. But in, in the blog, they can write longer tests, and I was missing that. So it's nice to have that back. And um, it's cute, the, the overall layout of the website is very cute. It's especially the clay dolls that uh, represents the clamp members, I really like that. It's a different way of, of, of presenting themselves. I just think the website deserves a lot more. And I think it's a transition phase. I think the website will grow with time, hopefully. Um, the website is... Um, I, I noticed that the website is created using the WordPress platform. It could mean that it would be a very simple website, 
but you can also do some great stuff with WordPress. It all depends on how much you know of of you know uh, designing websites. So and the platform doesn't mean anything, but I just think it's curious to know that it's WordPress. They also launched a Facebook page, but it was closed um, on the same day. I think there was a mistake with Facebook itself, not from from Clamp Management. I think that um, maybe the, they thought it was a robot because uh, the Facebook was basically uh, reposting the tweets from the Twitter account. There was no um, human activity in the page itself. It was just a you know a, a script, uh, an application that was reposting everything from Twitter. So maybe. Facebook thought that was suspicious and they closed the account. I don't know. Because uh, a few hours after the, the the page was announced, you can no longer access it. So And they removed the link from the website. I think they're still trying to fix that. And hopefully in the future, we might see a Facebook page for Clamp. The URL was facebook.com slash clamp4, clamp and the number 4. Uh, not sure if they if that will remain the same. Um, speaking of Twitter, apart from the the clamp Twitter, we also have now uh, Okawa's official Twitter account and Nikoi's official Twitter account. Well, it's very difficult to follow the 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 clamp channel, the clamp Twitter, and now we have two more. <laughs> That's nice, of course, but um, they should. And, and we have the blog also on the on the website. I think they should, you know, just choose one channel and go for it. It's just driving me crazy trying to keep up with everything they say. Um, for Okawa, she said that she would basically use the the Twitter, her Twitter account for tweet casting, which is also very random. They start tweet casting out of the blue and then if you miss it you miss it because they don't leave the the recording there so you can listen to it later no they're very evil ladies and they just do it live and if you miss it well it's your problem so i've missed it a lot of the tweet cast because sometimes i'm working sometimes i'm sleeping and i cannot you know keep pace with with everything unfortunately uh, most of them, at least, has nothing to do with their work, which is a shame. <laughs> they they only talk about food and uh, drinks and some other random uh, subjects. So yeah, for Oko, I think she was um, talking about uh, noodles. That's this seems like her latest addiction. So she keeps talking about noodles on her Twitter and her tweetcast. So yeah, I'll keep following the three accounts, the Clamp official account, the Okawa's and Nekoi's official account, and see uh, what they can offer to us. Hopefully they would share some drawings and some interesting stuff. But yeah, the website is back, it's not really what we expect it to be, but at least we have it back, so we should be very happy about it because now we have a schedule we have a calendar with all the releases we've been missing that uh, so that's very nice and uh, we have the blog I just hope that it will grow um, into a, a very useful website in the future so some other news is regarding the Holic drama TV drama uh, Blu-ray um, it's finally getting a release at the end of the, the year. Uh, the Blu-ray box will come out in November 6th. Um, that's very, very cool because I was wondering myself uh, if there would be some sort of DVD or Blu-ray release and I'm very happy that there will because it's such a great series. Uh, I really like the trivia drama. Um, I think it's a very good adaptation. So I'm very happy that there will be a, a, a Blu-ray release. And it looks like Clamp will draw the, the, the box uh, art, the box illustration. So I'm very much looking forward to that. I wonder if they will draw um, the characters more human-like, like, like to, to look like the, the actors that play the characters, 
or if they do, they will draw, you know, the, the usual the usual way. I think it would be very interesting if they could do something like um, more um, close to the the actors. They did that for the Tokyo Babylon um, live action, uh, the Tokyo Babylon 1999, and it was very cool to see that. So I hope they will do this for the 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 Holic, but I have no idea. It's a pity that the the TV drama didn't get a second season or some some special episodes because I think it was a very very high quality production. I didn't like very much the acting of the the actor that plays Watanuki or even Himawari, but Domeki and Yuko was just perfect. I think they they it was very spot on. And I think they twisted the show a little to make it more uh, dark and more um, horror-like instead of comedy. All the comedy elements were gone. But it wasn't bad. It, I think it was a very interesting choice because it looked very mysterious and very... Um, um, yeah, mysterious is the word. Very, very nice adaptation and... Uh, I hope there will be more adaptations of of clip mangas into live action. That's it, everyone. Thank you for listening, for coming this far. I had a very good time. Um, if you'd like to send some comments or topics or questions or anything at all, feel free to do so. Uh, through my Facebook page or sending me a, a, a message on Facebook, on my Tumblr, my live journal. Anyway, I think it's it's pretty easy to contact me. Feel free to do it in the best way you prefer. Don't forget to stay in touch with the latest Clamp news. Uh, you can visit my live journal. It's shibiuto.livejournal.com. The Facebook page is facebook.com slash shibiutoLJ. And my Tumblr is chibiuto.tumblr.com. To keep up with the latest Clamp News, make sure to follow one of these. I hope you had a good time listening to this, and see you again sometime soon.